Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Tonight I'm going to do a tutorial on how to edit general fashion images. This particular image is what I'll be working on tonight. So it's not so much a tutorial as it is um, just kind of like a following along to what I'm doing with this photo and maybe applying some of those techniques to your own work. Uh, I know more people have been asking me to do um, more images and more uh, tutorials on how I do my own images from start to finish. So I thought today would be a good opportunity to do that. Uh, this photo was taken on the weekend actually at a photo shoot I did in Melbourne and it was just a really nice wintry fashion shoot, um, really lovely styling by the stylist and I just want to show you guys how I edited this photo in particular if you were interested, uh, which I hope you guys are. So I'm just going to start in camera raw with this image because I have already edited this image but I'm just sort of like going back to the beginning for what I did for it and just sort of explaining all the steps and including the uh, toning of the image as well. So yeah, I'm just going to start off in camera raw and I'm going to just change a few sliders here. Now this image was a bit of a problem image because obviously as you can see it's very washed out. Uh, the flare from the sun, I did have my lens hood on, my 85mm, but unfortunately the sun just still came a little bit too much uh, through on into the photograph and that was probably at the angle that I was standing at and I probably should have moved a little bit more to the side a bit further out of the sun's uh, rays so obviously this has caused a really big flare in the image and it's quite uh, it's lacking a lot of contrast so what we're going to do first thing is really up the contrast a lot in the image and we're also going to pull in the blacks of the image because there's not a lot of blacks in there at the moment. Uh, the shadows are quite light, so I'm just going to move that down a lot more. So that's already made a huge difference. And I'm also going to just move the exposure down just a little bit because it was just looking a little bit too bright there for a minute. And I'm going to up the clarity as well. Clarity is great for just kind of enhancing um, certain parts of the image, especially if there has been a lot of contrast lacking in the image as well. So I'm going to alter the temperature now because obviously this is way too warm and because of that flare it's really cast like an orange colour over the photograph. So I'm going to move this temperature just down to the cooler blue side and probably just stop around there for now maybe a little bit more and just pull it back from the greens just a little bit more into the pinks on the tint just a little bit and that should do I might just add even a little bit more contrast to the image we really want to make her features pop and and just darken the image in parts so I'll just pull the blacks in just a little bit more again now we're just going to move on to sharpening the image and I'm just going to push sharpening up a little bit and I'm going to go back to the temperature I think and just bring that down even more because it's still looking a little bit too warm okay so usually after this step I would save the image so I'll save that as a PSD okay and so after saving that as a PSD I will open that into Photoshop and I'm not sure why that is on but anyway Okay, so we'll get to editing the image. So first of all, if you guys don't know already, I like to do a lot of my skin editing first. I think it just gives me a better picture of how the overall image is going to look once I finish with toning. I like to get that out of the way and do that first. So we're going to start by applying a frequency separation action. I probably will do another video on how to create a frequency separation action, but at the moment I'm just using one that's already been created that I've downloaded. Um, and I will link it below to where you can download that. So I'm just going to apply that action and go through this, select invert and add. Okay. So if you download the frequency separation action that I've downloaded here, uh, and the one that I've linked to in the description, you'll just go through the same steps there as what I was doing. So once that's been applied, you'll have the higher layer, which is the texture layer, and the low layer, which is more for the coloring of the photograph. Uh, so what we're going to do first, because 
Emma the model has absolutely stunning skin and there's really, it's quite flawless. There's not a lot we're going to have to do to it. We'll just work very slightly on the low layer first. So I'll just hide the texture layer to begin with. And then we're just going to click on the low layer, click on the healing brush. So this one here, the healing brush tool. And we're going to start selecting by holding down Alt on the keyboard and just moving over the parts that are a little bit uneven in the skin tone. So you just have to keep selecting areas of the image that you want to replace the uneven parts with. So just by selecting from the lighter part and just moving it over this, it'll tend to make it a bit lighter. We don't want to work too much with it because it's already looking pretty good at the moment. Um, there's not much I'm going to have to do on the face really because there's not a lot of unevenness in the in the skin tone on the face. So we're just going to go back to the high layer. So we'll switch that on again and click on the high layer. And now we're just going to zoom in and I'll use the clone stamp tool. And we're just going to like the healing brush tool hold down alt and select areas that you want to replace the imperfections with so and then just drag it over those hairs in this case and sometimes if the clone tool is just not working you can go back to the healing brush and do the same thing it tends to blend it a little bit more I like to not work too much with the high layer though because it can get the skin looking quite plasticky and that's not really what we want. We want it to look fairly natural. I don't tend to do a lot underneath the eyes either but we're just going to softly just remove some of the darker parts there. So not too much though because as I said it can start to look very dull like when you when you play too much with under the eyes so I'm going to zoom out now all right so we haven't really made too much of a difference there with the frequency separation I always like using that though because I feel like it's a bit of a safer way to go about um, editing skin and it's going to retain a lot of the image quality so there is just kind of like a bit of a patch here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's visible on my screen. And we're just going to get the clone stamp tool and just kind of paint over that. And just over a couple of the other imperfections there. So the next part will just be removing any stray hairs. So any specific hairs that really stick out that I can remove on the high layer, I'll try and do beforehand. You may need to tamper with the low layer as well. So if we just click on the eye here, obviously there's a bit of color on the low layer and that will show through if we don't remove that. I'm just going to get the healing brush tool again and I'm going to start just moving it back and forth over the hair because so we don't really want any of these hairs sort of standing out too much. The other ones at the moment are fine but this one is just kind of sticking out a little bit too much I think. And You don't have to be too perfect on the low layer either because the texture layer is really what's going to be picked up a lot. Okay, so we'll just kind of blend that into the background there. And we'll click back on the high layer. So obviously there's no part in the low layer that's filling that in now. So we'll get the clone stamp tool and we'll just select away from the hair and then drag that over it. And just do the rest of those oops hairs until that's gone okay So it does 
doesn't need to be too perfect because we'll probably go over with the clone stamp again a little bit later on just to get rid of some of the other hairs that are kind of sticking out so we'll just leave it at that for now and then we'll zoom out a little bit more okay and any of the other hairs that are kind of standing out at the moment we will remove later on so for now I'm just going to click on the group layer and I'm going to hold down alt and click on new layer now we're going to change the mode of the layer to overlay and check the box that is fill with an overlay neutral color so this is going to be our dodging and burning layer so first off I'm just going to dodge and burn a few parts of the image that could probably be highlighted even more so I usually do this with most of my images I'm just going to make this brush size a little bit smaller and I'm going to start just defining Emma's eyebrows a little bit more because as I said with that flare that was coming into the photo uh, it, it has sort of washed out some of her features and uh, some of the makeup on her face which is a bit of a shame because it's, it's really lovely makeup so we want to make sure that stands out We'll just define her eyebrows a little bit more. Usually I only have my exposure set to about 6 or 7 percent uh, because I don't like having it too heavy when I'm dodging and burning. It's very easy to go overboard with it. Okay, so they don't need to be perfect. We just want to define them that little bit more. Her lashes as well, we can darken up a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, and now we're going to switch over to dodging and we're going to select midtones. So before we were on midtones for uh, burning, I think, as well. But we're going to use midtones as well for dodging. And we're just going to highlight some of the areas that are already highlighted, but just to enhance them a little bit more, just underneath the eyes, on the cheekbones, and the nose just above the mouth and the chin and I'm going to do some of the eyes as well so we're just going to do underneath the brow bone just to highlight that and we'll just kind of smoothen that out a little bit okay and then we're just going to lighten up the eyes a little bit. I never like to push the eyes too far because they can tend to look very doll-like as well as a lot of other things if you, step, if you start to over edit them. Okay, so I'm gonna get the highlights now. I'm gonna select that and I'm going to just brighten the eyes up even more. And just under the brow bone just to highlight those parts and just in the inner corners of the eye as well and I'm going to get the burning tool out again and just do underneath the eyes a little bit more so we don't want to go too heavy with it just enough to sort of enhance her features more so as you can see the dodging and burning layers just really enhanced her features and we're going to zoom out now so it's enhanced them without making them look over the top which is kind of what we want I'm just going to even up her eyebrows a little bit because the way that I tried to enhance them then was probably a little bit uneven that was my bad okay I'm just going to undo that there we go okay Just want to make sure they're a little bit more even. Okay, so we'll zoom out. All right, so we're, we're pretty much done there. I'm just going to take a snapshot for reference so you guys can see what we've done since we started. And as you can see, it's just made a really slight difference with the image, but that's really all we want because I was really happy with this image overall and I didn't want to make too many adjustments to it either. So just keeping it as natural as possible. And we're also just going to bring the dodge tool out just to highlight some of her 
hair, just on the parts where it's already been highlighted. We just want to sort of shine them up a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so if we zoom out, we can start to look at what we might do toning wise. So I'm going to start adding some more layers now and I'm going to start adding some colors. So the first color I'm going to add, this is just how I've edited the photo beforehand, by the way. Um, so it's not like I'm making this up on the spot or anything. These are actually the, the adjustments I've used uh, for the coloring. So just so you guys find it a little bit easier to follow along instead of me just sitting here and making up tones as I go. Uh, they're kind of like a pre-done pre thing anyway. So the first color will be a solid color. And we're going to change the number to 313048. And we'll press OK. And we're going to set this one to soft light at 9%. So I want the overall coloring of the image to be quite a little bit more on the cool toned side of things but not overly cool. I still want a little bit of warmth in the photograph. So just by doing that it's kind of enhanced some of the shadows a little bit more and given them a bit more of a cooler toning. So we're going to add another solid color and this one's going to be 586 886. I'll press OK. This one's going to be set to color dodge at 5%. So this one's really just going to be enhancing the image uh, in the highlights and giving it a little bit more of a cool tone as well. So as you can see it doesn't do a lot but just kind of gives it a little bit more brightness and uh, cool tone blue in the highlights. The next adjustment will be a selective color. So we'll just bring that up here under adjustments and we're going to alter just the whites, neutrals and blacks which are down the bottom here. So first off, we'll just move the whites around and we're going to set cyan to minus four, magenta to plus nine, yellows to plus eight, and just black at zero. So we're just kind of upping the warmth a little bit more in the, in the highlights because it was starting to look a little bit too cool. And now we're going to move on to neutrals. And for cyan, we're just going to move that to plus one. For magenta, we'll move that to plus one. For yellows, we'll move that to minus two. And then just zero for blacks as well. So just making a few minor adjustments there. I'll show you guys what this does after I've finished, but we'll go to blacks and just move a few of those sliders. So we're going to leave cyan at zero. We're going to move magenta to plus two. We're going to move yellows to plus four. And then blacks just at zero. So I'll show you guys what that has done with selective color. So it's given the image a little bit more of a pink tone and given it a little bit more of a cooler effect overall. But we just wanted to make some slight adjustments there so selective color is really good for that and now we're going to add a levels to really just up the contrast a little bit more within the photograph so the numbers we're going to put in are 14 so we'll move the shadows to 14 and that's really going to give the image a lot more contrast uh, we'll leave the midtones at 1 and the highlights will go down to 235 So I'll go back to the layers and show you guys how much contrast that has actually added to the image. And it just really gives it a nice brighter effect overall. Now we're going to bring up curves. And I'm actually not going to do anything with the RGB side of things, which will alter the brightness and the shadows and everything else. I'm actually going to go straight to the uh, red channel. And I'm going to make a few points on here. So the first point would just be zero which is already there. The second point will be 56 and 59.
the next point will be 178 and 179. So I might just have to type some of these in. So that was 178 and 179. Sometimes I just don't want to move to the point <laughs> that I'm trying to get it to. So sometimes I have to just type them in. Now we'll go to the greens because the last point will just be left at 255, which is already there. So we'll go to the greens. First point will be zero. The second point will be 86 and 85. And then the next point will be 188 and 185. And then the last point will just be 255. And now we'll go to the blues. And the next couple of points we're going to move around will be, the first one will be 56 and 54. The next one will be 197 and 194. And then the last point would just be 255, which is already there. So just by moving around those sliders and the curves in that adjustment layer, we've kind of changed the toning a little bit more. So it's kind of giving it just that little bit more of a cooler effect overall without making any major adjustments. And for those that don't know, and just so this isn't overly confusing, what the actual colored channels are doing uh, when you're altering that in curves, if you're altering the reds, uh, you're actually altering the reds and the blues in the image. So this will generally be the blue side. If you move that down to the blue side, that's what you'll end up getting in the image. If you move that up, it'll create reds in the image. So I'll just undo that. Same with greens, except that's green and pink that you're working with. It's just easier to remember it this way because it's usually those two colors that you deal with. So green and pink. And then blue will be blue and yellow that you'll deal with. And it's always going to be dependent on how far those points are above or below the line as to how colored your image is going to be and which colors will be appearing in the image. Okay, so we'll go back to layers now. And we're going to make another solid color adjustment. This one will be 2E3, C62. We'll press OK. This one will be set to lighten at 4%. So this is a very minor adjustment. And if you look closely, it does tend to fill in the shadows of the image. So I wanted this image to have quite a bit of contrast, but I didn't want uh, you know, any um, colors to take up this entire area and make it look too washed out. So unfortunately, when you do set colors to lighten, that can sometimes happen. But I do like the effect of just having some cooler blacks and uh, shadows in the image. So this will create that effect a little bit more without going overboard. So if you move it down to 4% opacity, it'll have a much softer effect. Now we're going to bring up another solid color. And this one's going to be 8A762F. And we'll press OK. This one's going to be set to soft light at 11%. So if we just switch that off and then on again, it just adds that element of warmth back into the image because without it, it is starting to look a little bit too washed out, a little bit too blue. So just to add that back into the photograph gives it that little bit of warmth. And especially with the sun hitting her hair in the back, I think it just works a little bit better having that there. And I just want the, the face to be a little bit more um, filled with a bit more contrast, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the face and I'm just going to create a levels layer just for her face. So the first thing I'll do is just grab the lasso tool, which is over here and feathered at 50 pixels is fine. So we'll just move that around her face. And what I'm going to do now is go down to my adjustment layers and click on levels. So we'll go to our layers. And as you can see the mask layer here, you can see that that, that area of the photo is selected. So I'm not changing anything around her face, just her face. So if I go back to my adjustments and I start moving the sliders around, it's just going to change the area that I've selected. So I'm going to just add a little bit more contrast 
just a little bit more brightness and contrast to it. And if I click that on and off, that just gives me a little bit more um, of an idea of how much contrast to add. So I think that's fine. I probably wouldn't go any heavier than that. I might just bring the blacks to just back a little bit, just to there. All right. So I'm really happy with all those adjustments. So usually I would save this as a PSD uh, as it is now. And then I would generally just flatten the image after saving it as a PSD. So we'll just take another screenshot. So there's just a few more things that we need to do with this image before we're finished. Okay, so as I said before with the hairs, we're just gonna grab the clone stamp tool and we're going to duplicate the background layer. So just by dragging that into a new layer, that will duplicate it. So we're working on another layer because we don't wanna destroy the original image or any of the quality that was on the original background layer. So we're going to use this layer and that will allow us to, if we make any, mist any mistakes, it'll be a lot easier. So I'll just drop the hardness a little bit and move the size of the brush up a little bit too. I think probably even more. Okay, so what we're going to do is click Alt, we'll hold it down and select the area without any hair. Then we're going to change the opacity and we're going to move that down to around probably around 45, 50%. And we're going to drag that just over the image. So we're just kind of like getting rid of some of the flyaways there without having to go and remove every single little hair because sometimes that can look worse if you try and do that. So we'll zoom out just to see if that's made a difference. And it has, but I would probably set this layer probably just to give it a little bit of texture on the side of her hair so it doesn't look too straight. I'd probably set it to maybe 60%. So it's still got like a little bit, a little bit of light there um, behind her hair, but it's not going to be overly strong. So we'll just flatten that for now. Okay, but there is one more little hair that's annoying me. So I'm just going to drag that background layer again, duplicate it again, and we're just going to get the healing brush tool this time. Hold down Alt, select, and then run it over that hair because it was annoying me. <laughs> so we'll just get rid of that one. And then we will zoom out. So it just looks a little bit tidier without that hair there as well. Okay, so if we just flatten that now, I'm just going to give the image a sharpen and that's going to be pretty much it. So to sharpen, I like to duplicate my background layer. And then we go filter, other, high pass. And usually it's probably around five. And then we'll set the blending mode to overlay. So sometimes if overlay is not giving you enough um, sharpness, I like to set it to vivid light. And that really etches out some of the sharpening in the photograph and really enhances features. And I really want her eyes especially to be the center point of this photograph. So I'm just going to try and lower the opacity so it's not too strong. Sometimes vivid light just works a little bit better than overlay. So if I set it to around 63%, that's really giving me a lot of detail in the face there. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's really sharpening it up a lot. All right, and then I would usually flatten the image and save as a JPEG. So uh, that's pretty much all I'm doing to the image now. That's that's pretty much the end of the tutorial. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this, uh, this tutorial on editing this photograph. I hope you guys learnt something that you could possibly take back to your own photographs and apply that there. Um, if you guys can get something like that out of my tutorials, that's always awesome and makes me feel so much better about doing them and actually makes me feel like they're a little bit more, you know, uh, helpful for people. 
So I hope you guys did enjoy this uh, tutorial and I really hope to have more videos up soon. I do have a few more behind the scenes videos probably coming up soon as well. So be sure to look out for those. Keep the requests coming as well as always and I will see you next time. Bye.